is worshipping with us today. The watchword for Eternity Sunday is taken from Luke 12, verse 35. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. Announcement for this morning. Uh, next Sunday, the church service will be at 9.30. Not the normal time, 8.30, but 9.30. And uh, the reason being that we're going to have a new member social after tea, after the service. And uh, new members will be contacted during the week and invited. And we're also encouraging older members to come along and join in and enjoy a bride together with the new members. Give us an opportunity to welcome the new members to the church and get to know them. And um, please bring your own meat and uh, salad to share. Thank you. We celebrate the service in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we look back over the past year. And we remember those who have gone before us into God's eternal presence. And I would like to read out the names of those who have passed away in the last year now. And I'll say I'm going to come forward. And we will light a candle for each person. Actually, ask one of you if there's a family member or friend of that person here today. And we would like you to come forward and just light a candle for that person. And Diana will light a candle for those who don't have a family or a friend here today. Our Lord over life and death has called into his presence Gerald Bass on the 13th of December 2021. Marjorie Bayer on the 16th of December 2021. Denzel Redloff on the 31st of December 2021. Kretzmann on the 3rd of January 2022. Otto Sporky. on the 23rd of February. Sheila Raven on the 28th of February. Alan Richter, 
1st of March this year. George Marie on the 12th of April. Sandra Hogan passed away on the 12th of April of this year. Gilbert Palmer passed away on the 31st of July. Lens, 12th of August. Denise Herbert passed away on the 14th of September. And Ivor Bass passed away on the 25th of October. Also remember the nine members whose memorial service was held here at this church. Cecil Bass, and Anthony Mules. In a moment of silence, let us remember these people we love that have gone before us. And I invite everyone who still wants to light a candle in remembrance of someone they miss now, today, dearly, come forward and light a candle. We have some extra candles at the back as well, so there are more than enough for everyone.
Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray be with family and friends who today with sad hearts remember a loved one. Comfort them and give them the peace that only you can give. Help them, help them and all of us to remember that you have conquered all death and suffering and that there's nothing that can ever separate us from your love that is in Christ Jesus your Son. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Amen. Please be seated and let us now sing the first hymn, Lord of all gentleness.
God, we come before you, remembering all the good people we have known. We are now in your eternal, we are now in your eternal presence. Lord, we pray, fill us with Christian hope, with thankful hearts and unshakable trust. May your church proclaim your power through life and death, joy and sorrow, in the old and in the new. This we pray in the name of our Saviour Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today is written in chapter 21 of the book of Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. Let us respond to these wonderful words that we heard just now with the confession of our faith in the living triune God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
towards God in a moment of silence and pray that He will fill us with His Spirit and open our ears and our hearts for His Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Please be seated. Dear congregation, the sermon text for this Eternity Sunday is taken from the Gospel according to Mark chapter 13 and reads as follows. Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Dear congregation, there you have it. Heaven and earth will pass away. That is something we don't always really want to hear, do we? Heaven and earth, everything we know, will one day be no more. Something I don't even want to imagine, let alone see happening. And yet deep within us, we all know that that is the reality of life. But at some, some point, it will all end. Something we in a way already realize and experience every time we lose a loved one. For those who remain, the loss of a loved one is as if heaven and earth has suddenly fallen apart. I don't know how I will cope without him or her. It feels like the ground under my feet has been pulled out from underneath me. My life, as I knew it, has come to an end. Just some of the things people say to me when I visit them after the passing of a loved one. Something many of you have experienced in your lives. An experience that brought us together today on this Sunday as we remember those who are no longer amongst us. It is a day of remembrance that may bring tears back into our eyes. And it is also a day on which we may ask ourselves, what is the meaning of death and dying? And what is there to live for? What remains when in the end everything we love and care about passes away? When will it be my day to go? Yes, when will everything end? When will heaven and earth finally pass away? Questions humanity has asked itself throughout the ages. Especially the question about the end times. A topic about which numerous books have been written and many movies have been produced. It has become a big business that time and again captivates the imagination of the masses. We also get a number of preachers who just love to preach about it, the end times, using fear to motivate people to repent and give their lives to Jesus in the hope that he will save them from the chaos and the suffering of this nearing doomsday. We, however, are today not interested in that kind of business. Instead, we are here today to seek comfort, to seek hope in the face of death, in 
in the face of the end, when heaven and earth will pass away. And instead of speculating about it and trying to make our own sense of it, I suggest that we should rather seek answers in God's Word, in words spoken by Jesus, for example. And one of the first things that Jesus said in our text about the end times and especially about the time when heaven and earth will pass away is that no one knows. About that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. In other words, whatever anyone says about the end times and about when it will happen, don't believe any of it. Because no one knows. Not the angels from heaven, not even the Son. The only one who knows is the Father, the maker of heaven and earth. So let us stop speculating about it and more importantly, let us stop allowing this topic to instill fear into our hearts and souls. Instead, let us rather seek comfort in the fact that in the end, God alone knows the day and the hour. And let us rather focus on what it means to live in faith here and now. Instead of living in faith, uh, instead of living in fear of what is still to come. Because that is what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to live in faith. He doesn't want us to constantly live in fear. However, at the same time, Jesus also doesn't want us to pretend to be immortal, always pretending to be invincible and in control of everything. Forgetting all about the fact that actually every single day on this earth is a gift from God. And that is why Jesus then paints this picture that wants to shake us up a bit. With it, with it he wants to say, wake up and stop sleepwalking through life. Jesus wants us to open our eyes and see that there's more to life than just that what is right in front of us. He wants us to look beyond this life, beyond this world that is destined to pass away and begin to see God's eternity already in the here and now. Yes, Jesus wants us to listen to our hearts. He wants us to really listen to that inner voice that tells us to live the life that we were called to live. And what that life looks like, or what that means, Jesus tells us with this story, saying that it's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. You and I are those servants that have been put in charge of this house we call life on earth. And each one of us has been given a task in the upkeep of this house. Yes, even though God knows that none of us are perfect, yet God has placed this house into our hands, saying, Now you take care of it. A huge responsibility placed upon us. Responsibility not to be taken lightly. Something that should inspire us to do, to do all we can to keep this house in good order. Encouraging us to do what we are supposed to do and to do it all in the name of our landlord who is none other than God's self. While, at the same time, always remembering that it is just temporary. It is not for always. Sooner or later, the owner of the house will return, and then life as we know it will come to an end. Something we are reminded of every day when we walk through life with open eyes, and see that change is actually the only constant. When we learn to accept that dying is just as much part of life as being born. 
is the house that has been given to us, our life, our surroundings, our possessions, our body, our mind, it is all temporary. And the sooner we come to accept that, the sooner we shall also be able to really live and actually find comfort in the fact that one day heaven and earth shall pass away. Finding comfort in the fact that one day my brokenness, my sickness, my weakness, my pain and my sorrow will also pass away. Everything except for this one thing. For as Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. That means in the end, God's word remains. The word that in the beginning brought everything into being, the word that became flesh and Jesus, the Son of God, that will remain. The word of life, the word of hope, the word of peace, the word of love, all of that will remain forever. And with that, Jesus invites us to lift our eyes up to him, who is our help and our comfort. He says, open your eyes, open your ears, and listen to the good news of eternal life, which in faith is already reaching out to you, into your reality, into the here and now. In other words, in this temporal life, let God's eternal word, God's eternity guide you and strengthen you. Let it fill you with hope and the courage to do what needs to be done in the air and now. Let it help you to stand up for justice. Let it fill you with love so that you may love one another. Let it give you hope so, so that you will not despair, but instead live to your full potential as a servant of God who has been given the task to do what is good and right. And then, don't be afraid. Don't fear the end. Don't fear that day when God returns, because you know what? God has placed his best servant at the door to keep watch over you. It is not you or I who have been given that responsibility, but instead, I believe it is Jesus, whom God has placed at the door of our lives. It is He alone who protects our house. It is He, Jesus, the Son of God, who will also continue to remind us of God's Word, God's eternity that awaits us all. God's eternity that remains when our lives on this earth come to an end. God's eternity given to you and me through God's love that is not bound by space or time. God's eternal love revealed to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is what remains when heaven and earth pass away. Hence, do not despair. Do not give up. Instead, wake up. Wake up and watch. Watch and see how good the Lord is. In your sorrow and pain, reach out to God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sustainer of all life, the eternal God, who has already accepted our loved ones who have gone before us into his eternal love. Yes, look up and reach out to the giver of eternity. Put your trust in God alone, in the one who remains, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <coughs>
place your generosity in our hearts. We now come before you with these gifts as a sign of our gratitude. And we pray, may these gifts be of use to the furtherance of your kingdom, bringing hope to the despairing light, to the valley of shadows and peace in the midst of chaos. Make these tokens of our gratitude into a sign that shows your glory, so that all may come to see your glorious love. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that Christ is our healer and our companion on the way, who will never allow us to be lost. We pray for loved ones departed and who are renewed and refreshed in the love and light of you. And we pray may the light of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord, continue to shine in our lives, in our homes and in our community. And together we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, we will give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Please be seated for the final hymn by Christ we will remember the things.
just as God's word was sent into the world, world to heal and redeem, so God sends you now as well into the world this day to be light and love and healing and hope. So go now in the peace of the Lord and be a light for the world. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the peace of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer of all life, come upon you with His comfort and love, bless you and keep you now and forevermore. Thank you.